So I have a few poems for you. Um, want to keep it positive, but also real, mm -hmm. as one does. So um, this is Black Girl poem. It's called Busy Black Girl. I wanted to write this poem, but I was too busy trying to live. Hard to hold a pen when one is holding one's breath. I run everywhere I go, busy paper chasing, dream chasing, chasing myself. And the men who cat call me say, baby, why don't you slow down? Mm -hmm. To which I say, to them and to myself, be worthy and keep up. Mm -hmm. I am so busy getting over and becoming, trying to show up and occupy space in a world that treats me like a shadow. You call it black girl magic. I call it cramped manicure fingers, shopping skills and makeup prowess in between the struggle, because on the rare occasion you ever happen to notice me holding your world together, I will always look good doing it. <laughs> I try to set an example. I keep moving these mountains, rebuilding these bridges, attempting to be the super glue, cementing the black American dreams, busy trying not to die in a society apathetic to me. I am here, busy remaining, living, growing, transforming, standing proudly, black and nappy, from ongoing trial by fire, and perpetual birthing and rebirth. Mm -hmm. Is this on? It sounds I'm just making enough. sure because I don't. It's no, not, I think it went off. Is it off? It's going off. Is it, it if going you off? hold the button on I mean, the side, let me see. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think it's going to die, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this poem is for everyone. I will no longer make eye contact with lone, nervous, white female strangers in ghetto neighborhoods or situations. I am not your savior. Not my job to make you feel comfortable in front of young, groups of young black men gazing in your general direction. Don't ask me meaningless, disingenuous questions just to make conversation. Someone made me this bracelet. I'm not cold at all, and I don't know anything about the fries. I suggest you ask someone who works here. I do not, despite involuntary ethnic appearance of natural compliance and servitude. Let's both of us no longer be rude to each other and simply walk away from inappropriate and unnecessary interactions. I focus on holding my breath in elevators full of clusters of scared Caucasians, my intrusion causing all conversation to cease. I keep my eyes lowered to the floor. Sometimes I clutch my purse and grind my teeth. I intentionally allow unwarranted feelings of intimidation toward me. I'm five foot two, 100 pounds of very black militant revolutionary unpredictability. I see the fear in your eyes, the expectation of hostility, and I've chosen not to make you feel better about it. Allow you instead to inhale your own irrational doubts and baseless fears and exhale the oxygen-rich breathing space I need. I stand near enough for you to smell my subtle stench of righteous indignation. It overwhelms me, seeps through my pores like cheap vodka or poverty-induced anxiety, and the shower wouldn't wash it away. You can choose to forgive me or not. It's hard out here trying to maintain compassion and composure in the face of bold obtuseness and self-imposed ignorance when people who look alike keep asking the same questions over and over again. It's annoying that you won't talk to each other or take our word for it. I don't wonder why you're afraid of black people or what you expect from me. I know you, like I know wanton violence and open-faced animosity. We have passed down a profound knowledge of white people, generationally, for safety. Our attempt to keep our children from being beaten down in the street or being accosted by the police or having their feelings hurt at the grim reality of their role in this society. It is the type of knowledge that is acquired from hundreds of years of being maids and butlers and cooks and valets and mammies and wet nurses and slaves. It is this knowledge that keeps our insides free. And every day, I have to go out here and be black in America and explain once again that which is continuously misunderstood and ignored, myself. And my response to any white person who feels an unbearable pain of discomfort at yet another confrontational African-American aggressively expressing exasperation at the current ongoing situation is this. Racism should make every one of us uncomfortable. Mm. Every day, mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. not just me.
have. <laughs> we don't get there, though. Um, did y'all hear about that racist old white man that shot that teenage boy yeah. for trying to pick up his siblings? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, that inspired this. This is called Tuesday Morning. Good morning. It's Tuesday. Another black girl went missing last night. Did you notice? Did you feel the sudden vacuum where divinity, where divinity used to be? No, the news tends to ignore the uncelebrated, the unworshipped in the background. I myself travel alone at night a lot. I walk really fast and stay in view of streetlights a lot. I stay away from empty parking lots. I already merely exist as a series of unnamed statistics. I'd rather be a shadow than a ghost. Another black boy got shot yesterday. Not to be confused with the other black boy who got shot yesterday, or the other black boy who got shot last night, and last week, and last month, and day after tomorrow, and next Thursday afternoon. Not to say that every day another black boy gets shot, just to say that somebody should change the narrative. That is to say, we only hear about what is considered newsworthy. No one cares if black people kill each other, but black boys are also getting picked off by a succession of scared white men. Seems they fear most for their lives when they are the only one holding the gun. It is mid-afternoon on weekday. It is an understatement to say that I feel hunted. I am surrounded by apex predators today. I act nonchalant and pleasantly stoic. When I say no to the stranger demanding my phone number, will he stab me in the face? If a white man brings a gun to the school that I work at, will I have time to run away? Any minute, my next appearance could be on a missing poster or a memorial mural or in a say her name hashtag. It will not be newsworthy. It will not be noteworthy. It will just be Wednesday. I'm not leaving on that note. <laughs> Since we read people we like, I love Lewis, Lucille Clifton. So I realized as an adult that Lucille Clifton was the first poet I ever read because she used to write this uh, children's book about the adventures of Everett Anderson. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you read that, but that was one of the first books I read. And this is my favorite Lucille Clifton poem. To me, this is what freedom is about for me as a black woman. Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life? I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman. What did I see to be except myself? I made it up, here on this bridge between star, starshine and clay. My one hand holding tight my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Thank you.